upon a time, there was a story that we dove into about how me and Kai were on a podcast about stories where we dive into things. And you're listening to it right now here on whatever platform you listen to this on because we are getting into this week's episode. Um, And I'm here with Kai, my co-host, who I just mentioned. How are you doing today, Kai? Hey... I'm doing pretty good. I'm I'm in the the thick of the story. I'm here. <laughs> it's it's been a long time. The the energy drinks starting to wear off. Oh no! I've, I gotta take another sip. The the juice runs down my chin because I can't drink right. <laughs> and I feel the the energy flow through my. Anyway, yeah, I'm doing good. Dude, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, <laughs> lost. <laughs> Okay. I got lost in the sauce for a second. Yeah. Um, so this week, I had an interesting idea to talk about what makes a story. Because like the, the, the first episode was about what even is a story. And then this week, I wanted to go a little further with that and establish the main aspects of a story in terms of like, what, what does a story need? What are, the, what are the, the pillars, if you will? What are the... What are the main things that make a story work? Um, and I wanted to simplify it into the most like uh, like solid categories, right? So if you had to, if you had to dumb it down to like a certain amount, like what would it be? So I have written out my three pillars of storytelling, but before I do that, I wanted to ask Kai what he thinks the three pillars of storytelling are. And we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, Just to kind of understand the prompt. um, This is my three pillars of storytelling. This isn't it. Is there like an actual like published study of like, this is the three pillars of storytelling. Or is this like um, our. So I, I mean, I I came up with the idea the other day. I was just thinking about uh, topics and I was like, uh, I, really want to talk about like the aspects of storytelling that like like what really makes a story what it is so i, I kind of had this idea but then i i looked it up because i was i was curious like you were saying and honestly like there there are lots of different answers online i didn't find a cons- like a consistent answer for this which is why i thought it would be interesting to talk about because uh i wrote mine down before i even did any research um and you know i think the the results are kind of interesting. So, uh, I want, but before we get into that, I want to know what you think the three pillars of storytelling are, and then we can get into like mine and what I found out. And then we can maybe talk about what we think the, the definitive ones should be, in our opinion. So, okay, awesome. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, uh, I thought about this for, I feel really <laughs> uh, underprepared compared to the research you did. Cause I thought about this for a grand total of like maybe 45 seconds. <laughs> it's okay. I honestly didn't do that much research. Um, uh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, well, uh, the three pillars I thought of. Hey, we're off your head. These are fresh people. These are like fresh answers. These are fresh off the press so they're, of they're, guys' brain cells. They're so genuine. Like this is actually like better than I could have hoped for, honestly. Uh, so we've got the first pillar is the hero's journey. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this pillar has been around since like the dawn of storytelling. I've I've actually watched documentaries on like the hero's journey, right? And how it's it's just existed as like the way to tell stories. The most successful way, at least, to tell unique stories. Uh, and then the second pillar would be character development. Mm. Um, like the act of developing a character over time, their growth yes. as, a, as a character throughout this established hero's journey. And then the last pillar I've only named uh, the takeaway. I would say oh. the message, but that can be translated to like something that we don't really care about but like the takeaway interesting uh, okay. is the third pillar of the, the story interesting okay so um is there anything else you wanted to add to that uh n- well like no yeah were you good okay I so lost it. this is so interesting because i think on a on a it, like mine are very very similar 
And a lot of the stuff I saw online was also very, very similar. Um, so my three were, my number one was plot. My number two was characters. And my number three was the world or like world building. Um, that was my three. And uh, okay. which is interesting because okay. like plot and characters, I would say plot is kind of like hero's journey and characters is like character development. Like that's kind of what I was, uh, especially with characters. I, I was meaning character development specifically. Um, so I think we're on the same page there, okay. but then we differed with the world and the, uh, the takeaway. Um, so I'm interested in what you think about, like, cause I think that in, and we can get into each, each individual topic, uh, that we listed, but I'm interested in why you think the, the takeaway and the world, like, like, what well, is world building not as important? um as like maybe the overall message i i i or... understand the question now yes at first of like uh oh, what okay i understand the assignment uh i kind of lumped world building into character development okay so i guess you could say just like not just character development but like world development can go into that same thing mm -hmm. but I, I kind of feel like you can also lump world building into the plot because often what happens in the plot helps build the world it's true so it's true um it's interesting i feel like we, we might have a little bit different perspectives on this and i know that this was like this is such an abstract topic which is why i think it's interesting to talk about um because i was looking at this almost like uh, cause online, I saw a lot of people, they, you know, they would like, there was some lists that were like 10, seven different pillars. And those ones never really made sense to me. Cause like a lot of the pillars were like either the same as another one or whatever, but the ones that I found that were like the most similar to what we're talking about, they had four, which were people, places, plot, and purpose. Um, so okay. I have places, you have purpose, essentially, uh, for, yeah. for our three, which is interesting. But I, I looked at it as I don't think the purpose is a pillar. I don't think the meaning is a pillar because in my eyes, the three aspects of storytelling create the meaning and that the whole reason why someone is making a story is to convey their meaning. But I feel like the meaning is like almost like the result of the other three things or something like that kind of like what you were saying with the the characters and the plot are the like kind of create the world building which is that though that is true I, I i agree with that but uh i think the the way i looked at it in my brain was the world is the part of the story that is like already there it's unchanging right and then you have the characters which are the aspects in that world that like are changing so they're they're not the constant they're the thing that changes over time and then you have the plot which is like the order of events that like it's pretty much how do the world and the characters interact with each other that's what like creates the plot interesting um, so it's like it's almost like and then and then that whole bubble creates the meaning or the purpose or the takeaway um, okay. okay. So like, that's the way I was looking at it, and I'm interested on your thoughts because uh, to put it into very simple, in, in, in a, a very simple analogy, I had it as like you have like the the ground is the world, and you have the train track on the ground, which is the plot where they're going, and then you have like the train on the track, which is like the characters, um, and that's what creates the story. Okay, uh, interesting. So, yeah, so I'm interested in what, in what you think about it. Maybe, do you think that they're all too similar? Do you think that maybe uh, the purpose should be a fourth pillar? Or do you think the world should not be on there? Like, or what do you think? Well, uh, it, it's kind of interesting that it's split into four pillars instead of three, because we're going for three. Yeah, dude, three, um, I don't know, it's just three's so a magic nice. number. Yeah. Three doubloons, three peens in a pod. Yeah. Three, three yeah, there's uh, just threes everywhere. Three uh, bananas in my, uh, you know, yeah, anyways. um, In your kitchen? Yes. That's where I keep them. <laughs> I hope you don't keep your bananas <laughs> anywhere else. Anyway. 
<laughs> so I kind of you bring up an interesting thought uh, that the world is like unchanging, but there are lots of stories out there. Uh, if you want to get into it, like throw proverbial hands, uh, there are lots of plots that change the world. Like, yes. like I guess uh, Attack on Titan. You know, the, there's so much that happens in the plot that changes that world. Or yes, uh, but uh, but hold on. My my counterpoint to that though is it's not that the world can't change, but the world never causes the change. It's the people. It's the characters. Oh. Uh... So the characters are the change okay. and the world is the thing that is stagnant and that gotcha. th the way that they interact creates the plot. Um, that's kind of was, that was my idea at least. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like it needs those four pillars only because um, I, I can totally understand how like the world and the plot and the characters give the story meaning but well actually i don't know i might have to lean on what you're saying with the the world being one of the pillars because the meaning you can still start a story with the meaning in, in my experience for those of uh who are trying to like write stories and they've never done it before um you there's no specific way to do it there's not like a you have to start with the characters or you have to start with the world. You can even start with just the meaning. Like there, are, I know a lot of authors out there that, mm. or I can guess that they just wanted to write a story about like, the, I, I met uh, someone. Uh, I don't know if I should plug her specifically, but she, um, I met her at uh, Comic-Con for Utah. It's, it's called Fan X. Mm. Uh, and I met her, and I, she she uh, has her own kind of stuff about her story. And she wanted to tell a story, uh, a webcomic, about her trauma. Mm, like, going okay. through an abusive relationship. And that was, like, the meaning behind her story. But she didn't want to just, like, have her and the other people by name, you know? Because then it's, like, yeah, kind yeah. of incriminating of these people. But she started with the meaning and then everything else followed with that. So I just, I don't know. I think these pillars all exist in tandem with each other. Yes. And I... you can start with any one of them and it can help build the others. Or like if you, if you're lacking in characters, you can build the world and the meaning and the plot and your characters will start to build themselves. Yes. In the same way mm -hmm. that purpose could or world could any of the, I don't know. Yeah, I think you bring up a really good point because, like, the more the more we talk about this, the more I'm like, maybe there does need to be four. Maybe, maybe that the purpose pillar that I've been trying to leave out is actually just as important as the other three. Um, because, uh, well, well, for the train analogy, I think the train, it, so it's like you have, yeah, you have the the train, the tracks, and like the, the ground that the tracks are on, but like, you also have why did they get on the train? And where are they going? You know, and that's kind of what the purpose uh, would be. Trainception right there. Yeah. So it's like the, like, where is the train headed? You know, like, uh, that's kind of what the purpose is, I think. Um, if there's a train and other, there's a person on the train and a person on the tracks, does the train stop? And if it does stop and crash, does that change the world? Oh, it's like the trolley bet. problem, but for the pillars. Yeah, well, th this isn't an. Uh, it's a. I mean, you bring up a good point, uh, but you know, this is a uh, analogy train that cannot be, uh, you know, swayed or whatever. Um, Dude, the analogy train cannot be deterred. <laughs> it cannot. It cannot be moved <laughs> except in the direction that we wish to move. Yeah, it. and there there are no real people that can interact with the tracks or anything. Anyways. Dude, maybe maybe train. if the analogy train does get swayed like that's the best story of all time like who knows but um, who knows uh, Did we but, write a story about the analogy train <laughs> we probably could you know there's you know train train stories are usually really good uh i don't know if you realize that but usually i any, don't know any train stories any plot points what? around like being on a train i don't know dude like train scenes go what? hard i guess that's true yeah 
That's true. Like there's a whole chapter in Paper Mario Two uh, that takes place on a train. It's it's a great. Actually, like the longest sequence ever in Uncharted, the the game series is on a train. Yeah, I'm telling the, you, the, the, the train train theory train theory is real. Um, train theory. <laughs> Train theory is real. Have you ever seen a train scene that like wasn't like the bomb? Uh, freaking dude, I don't know. Like Mr. Beast video where he's like, "This train's gonna fall into a giant hole." And dude, that video is great. Um, dude, even the train scene in like Toy Story Three is like dude, yeah. super intense and Be- really good. Best scene in Ant Man One. Go hard. Best scene in Ant Man One. They're on a freaking train. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. They're like final battle. Dang, dude. Yeah. The dude, analogy they're... train. Yeah, in One Piece, uh, there's a train uh, in one of the arcs, and that train is like the best part of that arc. Well, kind of. The whole arc's good. Uh, anyways, trains go hard. Trains are just cool, man. Trains are cool. Uh, I didn't realize this, so this, this is an epiphany. Should we set said. up like <laughs> the train as like the proverbial four point five pillar of good storytelling <laughs> no no uh the train <laughs> is train. the story it's the complete package right uh oh the three pillars lie on their sides the train. Yeah. and make the analogy train okay okay wait this is, this actually works way too well um okay surprisingly well <laughs> we're, we're off topic uh so to get back to what I was saying, no, we're still on the three pillars. Okay, we are, but we are, but we, we're like somehow far away from it at the same time. Um, so the you're saying that you can make a story, you can start with purpose, um, and I think that's true. And I'm wondering what that would look like. But I guess my question is: Has there ever been a story that was made without purpose um, that was successful? Like. Is that is that the secret ingredient? Because you know when people create things, they they make them like usually it's from their own experiences, uh, and they make them from the heart. And like usually those ones are the ones that stand out to people. Because um, you know you could you could talk about like, uh, like, you know popcorn flicks or whatever. Which maybe those don't have a purpose, or maybe their purpose is to be a fun movie that you can forget about in a week or whatever. But uh, I'm just interested in like. Usually, like, when you make something, it's like you have that, like, idea in mind. And it's almost like you have that analogy or that that, that takeaway, right? Like, when I, like, uh, stories are like a way to tell someone something or have them experience something. Kind of like what we said in the first episode. Um, And I'm just wondering if, like, can can you make a story without that? Is that, like, necessary? Or maybe can you hop in without a meaning and then, like, find one or something? Like, what, what do you think? Yeah, well, that's a really good question. Because um, I think most stories at its core, because stories are told by people. And people, I believe, this is a firm belief, this is like Kai Doctrine here, the book of Kai. Uh, I believe every human on this entire planet has a story to tell. And any story that they tell one I think one of the reasons that makes it so hard for people to like want to publish certain stories is because they put a piece of themselves in to that story, even if it's a tiny piece of themselves. And that that gives their story meaning. A meaningless story. I'm trying to think of one. And the best I could think of is like Mr. Hippo from the Five Nights at Freddy's Custom Night. Like when you <laughs> If 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 anyone's never seen that, dude, if you die to that character, he just rants. For, and I'm talking like ranting yes. for maybe seven, eight minute rants about nothing. Uh, by the end of it, you just learn about how he like talked about rye bread, feeding it to ducks and yeah. stuff. It, which, which is a story in its own right. Kind of but yeah, I know what you mean where it's like there was no like deep impact from that. You know, like there's no deep impact, no deep meaning. But at the end of the day, if you analyze it any further than that, I mean, at its core, it's not a very interesting like it's a spectacle because the the player or often like the streamer, whoever is playing it has to sit through this like horrible story. And it's it's made to be horrible. But yes, 
That's like, something that's so yeah. interesting about it is that it's very clearly made to be horrible and it still captures your attention. So I guess the concept here is what what do you define as a successful story? Yeah. And just Because you mentioned that it is like these pillars are there to make a successful story, but how much of each pillar do you does it need in order to be a successful story? And do do we deter, how do we determine a story's success? Is it determined by how many times other people share it? Well, is it determined by like how much? Because if you go strictly off of how much money it makes, there are lots of good stories. People can be a good storyteller out there, like and just have it be like conversationalist storytelling yeah i um I, it's this is so interesting because i think one reason why I, I didn't like purpose being the fourth pillar is because i wanted the i think the other three just go hand in hand with each other and the purpose doesn't seem to fit in with the other three the way the others do um because it kind of has this overall presence like it the purpose is like why you're making it or it's why you're watching it like it's the why kind of in terms of like so we the, can... the fourth wall of it, right? Like you're breaking the fourth wall. It's, it has nothing to do with necessarily the story itself, except for maybe like, you know, you might maybe like the plot is deeply ingrained with it too, which is true. Yeah. But like for instance, that yeah. that hippo example that you gave from Five Nights at Freddy's is like they the purpose behind that story was to be like a lighthearted like joke that also was kind of of annoying if it happened multiple times, you know, like. That was the purpose behind it. It didn't have this deeply emotional, like, I want to share this, like, deeply important story in my heart kind of a thing. It wasn't one of those, but there was purpose behind it. There was meaning behind it. Um, but it's not like, it, like I don't know, like, it, it, it's weird how the, the purpose is such an abstract thing. And I guess, I guess my, my, my real question with it, because, you know, of course, purpose is in everything, even if you're trying to make something with no purpose that's still a purpose right um yeah yeah but well, the the question wow, i have perception. yeah the purpose i uh, question i have is like because there, there's like two different ways to make a story in terms of purpose there's like the way where you want to share something and it's you're using the the story as a medium to do that and then there's the other thing where you just want to make a story that's cool and the purpose like comes second like, I think that's kind of like what I'm getting at here, where like, if you look at like, you know, uh, religious texts or like parables or, uh, there's even just like short films and short stories. It's like a lot of them, they had a message that they wanted to say. And like, this story was a way to do that. Um, mm. whereas like, I feel like I want to tell stories about fictional characters, uh, in a fictional world and things, but I, I don't really have this like overall like purpose behind it. It's just because I think it's cool, which maybe that, that is the purpose, but like, I'm not going into it being like, I want to share my experience dealing with this trauma, or I want to, you know, spread this message. And like, it's like a parable and doing that, like, or this is an analogy for this thing, or this is an analogy for that thing. I just want to make a cool world with cool characters. And that's, that's like my main goal. So how does that relate to purpose? I think that's why I wasn't seeing purpose as like one of the four. Cause I was like, the other three is what I'm really interested in. But I think purpose is just as important. Um, I don't know. Uh, gotcha. what, what do you think? Well, uh, so based on what you've told me, if we go back to the analogy train, the yes <laughs> the three pillars are like the train cars right the or like the the track and the where it's going and all that stuff but the purpose is what the train is made out of oh. it's just kind of like there and you don't really think about it too much but it's like from so what you're saying it's not where you're like going purpose is baked well not necessarily because that's more like the plot it's like where are the characters going? Yeah, right? I guess that's Versus what the track is. The track the is the plot. So, yeah, that well, is where you're going. What the train is made out of, what the world is made out of, is kind of the purpose, if that makes sense. Because what you're telling me is that, like, 
even you said you want to make cool characters and you want to make a cool world, right? Yes. Just for the sake of it being cool. Well, what to you is cool? That's what's the interesting thing about this, where your own purpose is there. When yeah, you I are guess writing it's a really cool character, what what you define as a cool character is your purpose for writing that character. Yeah. Because I... you think it's cool and other people will probably also think it's cool. And as you naturally develop a cool character, their purpose and your purpose in telling the story will naturally write itself. So it's like when you're building a train, the analogy train, as it were, uh, <laughs> we don't really have, you, you don't always stop to think about exactly what you're making it out of. You just put people in the train and you, you might, a lot of authors or storytellers might already believe you know that the train is just built and you just have to put characters in it and send it somewhere and the purpose behind what it's made out of becomes clear later mm. yeah so yeah. maybe it's like the foundation that is like sitting under the pillars and not necessarily one of the three pillars itself like it's to, to be like cheesy it's like the 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 atmosphere or something like uh you know like in uh like zelda or something where it's like you have the the earth and then you have the life and then you have like the water and the, but then you also have like the air and it's like um it's like the part you you can't see right in front of you but it's uh -huh. there, you know um hey legend of zelda even has a train in it too oh <laughs> uh, yeah it does it has a whole game about a train um yeah, dude, this this trains turned out to be a, a great a great thing. Um, so uh, <laughs> I I love it. So it, it's so interesting. Yeah, because um, I think you're right. Like my I still have a, like even it's what I said earlier. Like even if you don't have a purpose, like that's your purpose. Like I just think it's interesting when like you have an idea first, and then you have to like incorporate it into the world and characters, and then like the contrast of like making the world and characters first, and then they kind of make the um because like yeah my meaning like my purpose would be to uh just make something really cool that i would want to like experience as a kid or like something that like a game that doesn't exist like my my, my dream game is one that does not exist but, like i want to make it right um like mm -hmm. that, that kind of idea and uh that 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 in and of itself is a purpose you know um so that is interesting i think i think purpose has earned its its fourth slot um or maybe it's the uh the pedestal in which the other three pillars stand on i don't know yeah yeah it's uh, the it's the um what is the last car called in the in the, the, uh, the caboose the caboose <laughs> it's the caboose pillar it's, of the... it's it's what fuels the trade i like that yeah yeah because you know the caboose has uh i don't know if that's actually i i I'm, I'm pretty I think sure it's the a caboose... friend car, actually. That drives the no, no, no. But I think the caboose is like what holds all like the coal and stuff. You know, so like, oh, yeah. All of the oh, fuel yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're something. right. I think that's what it all is. All the fuel. Um, there you go. I'm not entirely it's the sure. Caboose. But uh, yeah, the caboose has the. It's what's fueling you to make it. To make it. Dude, who knew you so... knew so much about trains? I, d I don't. I, I mean, okay, you know what? I'm the train master. I take it all back. You're um, the train man. Call me Mr. Train. Uh, the truth comes out. Yeah, back in 96, I, uh, you know, I made some trains back in my day. Is that what you spent your three doubloons on? Yeah, let, a me, train? let me tell you my story about how I built a train with three doubloons. I don't actually have a story. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, let's do let's a story uh, for another day. <laughs> that's a story for another day. Um... But yeah, uh, dang, I, this has been a great discussion, um, but I'm honestly not sure where to go with it at this point. I feel like we've, we've established you. So you think these are the definitive three pillars? Are there, are there um, any other things that could, like, if, if there was a fourth pillar, what would it be? You know what I mean? Well, like if we already determined the fourth or, pillar? Or a being... fifth. Like, if, you, if we had to add one more, what would it be? Oh, one more. Well, that's just the essence of like making these kind of pillars is that anything else that you try and shove in is just going to it's going to fall in like, one of those take, categories. 
It's good. Yeah, it's gonna fall into one of those categories. Um, oh, yeah. So what about what about set crew? Huh? What about uh? Well, that's more of like the medium. What about what uh? But I'm just listening to things. What about um? Uh, dude, I'm trying to think of one, dude. This is hard. You're right. Like, uh, I, I, I guess it's a, you're talking about if you mention like a set crew or like a medium of which the story is told, that's not really anything to do with the story. It's just like how you get the story to in the hands yes. of people. No, it's consume. true. I'm just, so like... I, I think that's a separate topic entirely. But at its core, if you were to break down any story, uh, whether it's told to you like it, by any medium, even just through someone's mouth, through dance even. Dances have stories. Mm -hmm. Photographs have stories. Dishes, it, randomly. A lot of people say there's like a story behind this dish or like this dish tells a story, this food, this like restaurant food tells a story. Uh, that's actually a medium I want to explore later is like storytelling. Yeah. Through, like other media. But uh, at its core, it all comes from one of those three pillars. And I really do, like, maybe I, I kind of want to open this up because it's, like, so interesting how, okay, I, I, here we go. I, my brain. Dude, yeah, lay it on me. Dude, the train flew off the analogy <laughs> track and it's back. Dude. Uh, I got it back. Run, it, run me over with your train, train, bro. I'm ready. I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, I'm interested to see because every kind of writer, if you've ever written like fan fiction or even just fiction or biolog biological fiction, what is that's not the word? Biographical what? fiction. <laughs> uh, like hi historical fiction yes. kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, if you've written any kind of fiction, you often a, a lot of writers tend to start with one of these three pillars and they favor that pillar over the others yes and shape like everything else around that pillar so like for me um in the stories that i write 9 times out of 10 it's like the the world mm. that happens first okay. for me so so i kind of start with the world where i take like a concept of society or like so as an example, I'm going to plug my own story here. Yes. I'm going to plug it in to the train and have it fuel us for yes. a second. Uh -huh. I'm writing a story called Leto. And I'm not going to go into too many specifics of it yet because I don't have too many specifics yet. But I started with the world. The uh, the the world itself what is a situation where uh, you there's a technology that's created that allows people to enter into other people's memories like trained uh therapists and stuff using this technology they can go into people's memories and kind of experience traumatic uh memories with the person for therapeutic reasons and that was that was just like the start of the world and from there from that bounce board i was able to develop more of the world and eventually I then could start placing characters in that world. Yeah. Okay. That, that okay. fit the world there. But I do know that like other people really like writing uh, OCs as it were, original characters. Um, yes. Like lots of fan fiction people do this. Uh, I think I'm not really part of the fan fiction community. I just, I don't know. For some reason, I it's hard for me to do fan fiction. Um, yes. But that's a topic a lot for of another day. Have... Yeah, <laughs> for another day. Uh, uh, people will start with original characters and then build the world around the character. Or uh, in some cases, people really like certain like sequences of plot. They really like, they want to try this kind of plot thing out. And then because they have what they want to happen in the plot, then they put characters in place and a world around it to make sure that what they want in the plot happens. So yeah. I know for my pillar, I tend to lean towards world when I start. But I'm interested to think to say like what what would you think would be your pillar to start? Yes, uh, telling story because at its core, that's what we're doing here. We want to learn how mm -hmm. to tell stories. And no. I think it's important to know which pillar you lean towards. 
I think you uh, took this in the perfect direction. This is where I w actually was going to take us next, um, was kind of like which pillars are, because everyone has their like bias, right? Like I think it's, it's like uh, if you had to order them one, two, and three in terms of like which ones are the most uh, like enjoyable for you. Like when you watch something, like what you can get enjoyment out of and stuff, which I think lines right up with what you're saying. Uh, because I prefer character development more than anything. I think that is my favorite thing is to like deeply know a character to like really pick at their brain and like, I don't care where they are or what they're doing as long as there's character development, which I, this, I got confirmed to me when I, uh, recently watched a high school romance anime, which I normally don't do. I'm usually like, Oh, I'm not into that stuff. Um, but it was it was on Netflix. It's called Toradora. If anyone's seen it, it came out in two thousand. Ah, oh, Toradora. Yeah, my wife just watched that one. Yeah. It's really good, and I found myself in love with the show because it was such a good, like, well written story about characters and how they develop. Like, it was it was strictly a character development show. They are in the same situations, like like they're in the same location the entire show. Uh, there's only a handful of important characters at the whole show. I think there's only a, probably around eight to 10 like main characters, like throughout the entire show. Right now, t granted it's only like, you know, it's like less than 30 episodes, but like there's only like five main characters and like five supporting characters. So not like the cast is so small and the plot is honestly, I could tell you the plot right now. Like the plot is literally, uh, like this guy meets this girl and, uh, you know, they kind of become friends, but like they hate each other at the same time, but then they end up becoming really good friends and they're, they're both like into someone else at the school, but then it turns out that they're actually not into those people and they're into each other. And then they end up getting together at the end of the show. Like, that's the whole plot is like, they end up meeting, they're it's like, just... they're perfect for each other, but they like, don't want to admit it. And then they end up admitting it. You know, it's like, that's the classic, it's like the, yeah. What were you going to say? The classic, what you're saying, the, the romance standard yeah. story, the but, like a frame romance plot. Yeah. So it was like, if you look at the location and you look at the plot, like the world and the, and the plot were so standard. And yeah, I still ended up loving the show because the character development was that strong. Um, so I think that that is what I look for when I am, at least when I'm consuming stories, uh, character development's huge for me. Um, but that being said, I do enjoy the other two and world building, I think is a close second for me. Um, because one of the main reasons I'm a huge one piece fan, I'm a huge Hunter Hunter fan. And one of the main reasons why I love those shows so much is because their worlds are so good and so well made. There is not a single plot point in one piece. Well, there, there might be a few, but, that like 98% of the plot points in one piece come back later. Like all the characters that are introduced are important later at some point. There's like over like 50 islands that are fleshed out with communities and people. And if there's different languages, there's different races that the way they interact is very realistic. Like there's politics, there's freaking politics, bro. Like if you, if you can have a fictional world with actual politics, like you've done it, you've made an actual world. Um, I think that's why a lot of people like, you know, they like Vinland Saga, which, you know, that's based off of real life in the, or it, to some extent, I don't, I don't know how realistic it is, but um, it's definitely based off of our world more than uh, fictional. So like it, it's, I love world building. Like if, if I were to create a story, cause I have a story that I've been wanting to tell since I was probably four or five years old. Um, and like, like, it, like that's when the game I've always wanted to make. And it like came into my mind. And the first thing that came into my mind was the main character, right? The guy who's going to run the show um, and kind of like his villains and things, right? Like that's the first thing my mind came up with. Uh, but oh, all throughout high school, I've been like trying to figure out like, what are the locations? What are the, the, like the worlds he, he's going to explore, you know? So like world building came second. And then it's only at this point in my life, like, after all of that, that I'm finally like, okay, I need to actually make sure that like the plot is like kind of cool. So like, I'm trying to like figure that out now, 
which may be the hardest part of making a story is having a good plot but i don't know dude uh for me that's the orders character development world building and then plot uh and i didn't really think about purpose so uh my purpose might be my fourth even though it's very important so um it's the well i think as we mentioned before it's the the thing that is sprinkled throughout your your whole all the other stuff yes yeah it's 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 what holds them all up you know so but yeah that that, does that that answer your question i feel like that was pretty good yeah yeah that answers (laughs) we got it we got it bro okay well um is there anything else any other thoughts uh i feel like we've uh we've pretty much established the the pillars and um you know like i don't think there's anything that could change it you know like that train that train is moving and it's moving fast and the train's going it is undeterrable so i did this brings to mind cuz i've been spending a lot of time trying to learn how to write stories and what makes stories and stuff like that um my th- kind of thoughts on these pillars are like you can uh not really sacrifice but i guess like you can have not a strong one of these pillars. Yes. As long as you strengthen the other two in in tandem with it. Because, like, there are lots of stories that, at its core, don't have a really meaningful plot. Or, honestly, not a... Not like a... I don't know. The plot itself is yes. like, what? Like, I mean, Nacho Libre, as an example. Yeah. Lots of comedies are, are that way. Where it's like, it has a plot... But it's not like a a strong plot. It's yeah. just like an event for things to happen. What makes them so enjoyable is usually, at least in comedy, the characters. Maybe the that's characters why I like are what comedy. makes it so enjoyable. I never thought about that. Maybe, yeah. Like maybe. I, I love and I mean comedies. Yeah. I also feel like when I'm consuming media, I I feel that I have a strong balance between world and characters because i do like writing good characters i like seeing good characters too like one of my favorite characters ever to see is cyclops from the x-men mm. um i think his entire character premise is so intriguing to me to have the i mean a lot of the mutants in the x-men series are like this but they often have a power that they're equipped with that has a huge drawback and it, they all have this weird balance of yes they have something that's really cool but also does this to them like cyclops is yes he shoots awesome freaking laser beams from his eyes but he's essentially blind well not blind but like he can never see just candidly he, he's mm-hmm. like stuck wearing glasses and visors for the rest of his life yeah you know and i i find it so intriguing as a character but then i end up i i'm starting to realize like then i start thinking about the entire world what does that mean for the world what does that mean for society how does society react as a whole to this Mm -hmm. so i think uh as we're talking about this i might lean more towards the world yeah not entirely it's they're neck and neck but like the world train just itches it ekes just a bit farther than the the character one yes which is which is cool, you know. It's cool that we uh, have those different values, you know, because it, it, like what's really... interesting is like the stories I make and the stories you make are going to be different uh, in their own ways because of this. But like, I feel like they're, you know, it's like it's interesting how both can be incredible, you know. And I think know, we need yeah. to find someone with a, a the plot affinity. Oh, we all work together. Give them a doubloon. Yeah, or, them, or that we could work with them. What are y'all bribe them with our doubloons? Be like, hey, I don't want to bribe them. I think they just deserve an show. honorary doubloon. Yeah. Oh, okay. What about the purpose guy? I that, mean, that nobody talks about. Oh well, everyone's got a purpose guy, so then we'd have to give everyone a doubloon, and oh. I don't know if we have that many. You're saying yet. you're saying having a purpose isn't special, then? No, it's just that. <laughs> well, I guess. <laughs> It's like, it's as Syndrome says, you know, if everyone's a hero, 
then no one is, you know? Yeah, if, it's, yeah. if everyone has a doubloon, then the doubloons aren't special anymore. Right. Okay, so now we're talking about doubloons. What about the train, huh? What if we invite them on the train? Well, if everyone's on the train, then... Well, actually, I don't know. Then <laughs> if everyone's, everyone's on the train, train it doesn't fit. Then no one's then... on the train. <laughs> <laughs> The world is now the train, and then you get analogy trainception, and then they all turn into trains, and then it's trains on trains. And dude, yeah, I mean that that yeah. sounds that sounds like a cool story to me. <laughs> and there's trains? another train laying sideways, trapped on the track, and the third train has <laughs> determined whether to pull the lever or not. And oh my gosh! But it, who's pulling the lever? Or... Another train or? No, no, the lever is a train. Okay. Like so, it's a train pulling on a train lever to determine if the train that's moving is going to run over the train that's tied to the track. But wow. now the tracks are also trains. Yeah, man. <sighs> Sounds like a real dilemma, dude. Uh... But anyways, uh, the uh, <laughs> the freaking uh, trolley problem—that's a topic for another day. Uh, yeah. Because anything can be a story, and that's what's amazing about stories, is that literally anything a story um this story like to exist is to story i guess i don't know uh, i mentioned this before in a previous episode but storytelling is an is a unique essence that i kind of feel like mostly only humans have i'm not sure if maybe there are animals that like communicate through storytelling if there are that's like really interesting and i would love to study that at some point but Humans have this unique way of telling, of sharing themselves at an intimate level beyond rude conversations. I, I mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's interesting. And like... in order to make it compelling, like there's a difference between just telling a story and telling a compelling story that grabs people's attention, like has them listen all the way through. And I think that's where these pillars come into conversation yeah yeah so what you're saying is these three pillars as we continue onward are going to be how we gauge like what makes a compelling story yeah and, it, and you know of course it, it, it doesn't have to be like if you don't have one of these or whatever uh but um, I do think that it is interesting to have this kind of maybe outlook to maybe maybe we can look at stories a little bit differently now where it, it might be easier to see certain aspects that we couldn't see before. Because um, like uh, now that we have these pillars to kind of like 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 you said, anything can fall into those categories. Like we can look at something like look at a scene from a show and it, it'll, it might be easier to like categorize it into these pillars to be like what was strong about this, what was not strong about this, was it lacking maybe in this pillar, or whatever, you know, I feel like it is kind of a good thing to, uh, like, kind of, you know, establish these different categories. Because, you know, moving forward, all the stories that we cover, uh, they all have these, you know, every story ever made has these, these pillars in them. So. Right, yeah. And uh, for this podcast, we are going to be going into uh case studies uh specific yes. case studies of of stories and uh using these pillars to kind of uh determine what works well what doesn't work well and really getting into like the nitty-gritty of this um so that we can understand because like I, th I wish i could remember who said this but some successful person somewhere said like if you want to be successful do what successful people do so like if 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 we're wanting to like monetize a story, we just do what other people did to monetize the story. And there's the unfortunate truth that there's this kind of like a weird uh side the track is going on a side tangent, but like it's like drifting, Tokyo drifting. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah, it's drifting. Uh there's no such thing as a truly original idea. Any idea oh, that man. even even the most original original ideas, original original stories, are based off of some level of uh, concept that the storyteller was perceiving. Yeah, it's weird. So like, if you think about going back to like uh, ancient 
myths of like gods and and like the god of fire and stuff like that is it's predicated off of the belief that this element like lightning lightning originally in a lot of uh like ancient myths and stuff is is an element that humans just didn't understand it back then it's this giant bolt of energy that blasts everything in it and it destroys the air itself right yeah and the only way they could explain that is to attach it to like a higher being so they would have the god of thunder the god of lightning uh, zeus and thor are examples of that um but even then those stories those characters are predicated off of a like a currently existing theory or thought so i i don't know that's kind of an interesting inception of like there's nothing truly uh yeah i mean that's a original. huge that's a huge like bomb to drop you know like it's it's and i i agree with you it's it's very interesting how uh i think like people are just and, and not even just people but like like even like evolution and anything living like we're all just kind of like blendered up like like everything that we experience is just blended up in our brain into like a smoothie of whatever we experienced and then like what we give people is that smoothie you know like right yeah so, so it's like you take in what you experience and then you like mix it all together and then you create something new you know um which in in a way it's not new because everything you used to make it was from someone else or something else right uh, but it's like I feel like we are capable of making kind of like a new product, um, at least yes. in, in some way, right? So it's like even though even though the components aren't new, uh, and maybe the inspirations aren't new, I feel like we are capable of making new experiences for people. Because another thing that's interesting about this whole conversation, you know, we're getting into the the deep end of the the creative side of creativity and and making things, uh, but like. Uh, if you, you know, uh, are trying to make something new, um, hold on, I lost my train of thought. Um, come on, dude, the, the train's leaving the station. I gotta catch it. Choo uh, um, choo, scratch scratch, get back on track. Hey, okay, hold on. What was I thinking about smoothies? Uh, I just want a smoothie now. Um, the world smoothie. The uh, your all of your experiences yes. are predicated on yes. so, other smoothies. So, uh, even though there might be something out there that, uh, like, is already it already exists and it's already like similar to what you've done, like maybe it has the same plot points or whatever, like same location. Uh, not everybody that is born into the world has experienced everything. So your version of it might be their first experience with that thing, you know. Like, I, mm. I, like there are so many things I've experienced where it's like, uh, there are so many different versions of this thing, but like my first experience of this thing, uh, had like a huge impact on me. So like, even though it may have been like the eighth iteration of it, or maybe it was like the reboot of something that came out like 50 years ago, you know, like how many people have yeah, seen yeah. the new karate kid versus the original, right? Or something like that. You Dude, know what I mean? That that's just an example. Arc difference. Uh, it, there is a huge difference. difference between those two. Well, there is, but I'm I'm just saying that like you might if some people may look at that and say that like these this is a movie with the same premise, so it's unoriginal, right? But like for someone who's never seen the original, it's brand new. So like just that that concept of like uh, even if what you have to offer may not be entirely original, that doesn't mean that the whoever you're giving it to has already seen all of those things, you know, so it's still worth giving, you know, like that, I, that's my point. Sure. Yeah. And I, I can totally agree with that. Um, I, I never wanted to say like, there's never going to be a truly original idea to deter someone from telling right. a story. It's just that actually this brings up an interesting question. Cause if like all of everyone's story is a smoothie, how <laughs> feasible would it be to make like, a world smoothie and Dude. just like everyone's stories and everyone there's actually a concept for this now that I think about it there's like a real concept uh, uh uh i don't know if it's a psychological or if it's like quantum theory or something like that 
uh, but it's considered something called the singularity. Uh, well, I guess there's there's like a a tech industry concept of singularity, but there's also like the like a quantum event called the singularity. And the quantum event that I'm referring to is like when the human experience and the experience of everything in the universe and everything that has ever existed culminates into one great whole. Yeah. This like combination of experiences forever and ever and always just melds into this one giant quantum smoothie of stories. I mean, as of right now, that quantum smoothie is the internet. Um, that's true. <laughs> pretty that's much. True. But I mean, it's missing some factors that make humans human, right? Like it's a very technological, like there's no emotions and things, which, you know, the internet has right, right. information. It, you can, you can feel emotions when you're on the internet, but like, uh, it's, yeah, it's like it's like a pseudo smoothie, it's like a it's like the the blue the blueprint for the smoothie. Kind of, uh, yeah, but yeah, no, but I know what you mean. It would be interesting, and I feel like that's kind of what we're doing slowly as a as a collective, you know, uh, human race. We're we're sharing these stories, which are a culmination of all the stories before us put into us. So eventually, the stories that you yeah you're gonna see are are a smoothie that's been you know, a thousand years in the making. Yeah. You know wow. I mean? That's deep. Yeah. It's a thousand year smoothie. <laughs> the thousand year smoothie, bro, is it's being created uh like every day, you know? More people are adding to it. And like I the, really want someone to draw like or to like make a graphic design <laughs> of just this giant smoothie on a t shirt. But, like, what's in the smoothie, like, bottle thing is just a ton of analogy trains. Yeah. Like, I don't, like, because, you know, we say Thousand Year Smoothie and you might draw, like, a rancid, like, smoothie. But, like, I want one. <laughs> like, I want this, like, mystical, you know, like, ancient, like, glowing smoothie of knowledge. I need, something. like, a genie train coming out of the smoothie. Yeah. You know? Like. Dude, yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking, dude. This this may be it. This may be how we uh, how we get our logo and uh, you know the the art and everything. <laughs> it's like, it's like the, smoothie the ideas are all trans- here. Someone just has to make it. Someone a giant that into, like, a giant yeah. smoothie of knowledge, glowing with yeah. knowledge. And there's a door that opens up, and there's a there's a freaking train coming out of it. Uh, that's the analogy train coming out and it's like flying through space you know and me and Kai are on the train drinking our own smoothies this is a that's the artwork the image that's it someone plugged that into like an AI generator and, and in, the, in the background you have you have the three uh, three pillars uh, in the background that are rising up from the clouds you know because we're in space um, yeah sounds amazing anyways uh that's that, that'll do it for today's episode uh the three pillars i th- i think it was i think we, it was pretty good pretty good conversation so uh i appreciate everybody at home listening or watching or whatever you do to consume this you know you maybe you're in your bathtub and you, you know you're having a podcast night with your your rubber ducky i don't know uh, whatever you do uh, i appreciate it and so does kai and you know we've been the 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 story guys uh that's what they call us the story story dudes um but this has been story dive and yeah any any final remarks kai any last words uh if you are watching this i'm so sorry because there's not much to watch hey you don't know that yeah maybe i don't know (laughs) You don't know that. <laughs> They're watching it with their minds. Who knows? Bro. Wait. Now I'm worried. Am I being watched? Yeah, dude, watching. That's the fifth pillar. Being watched. The fifth pillar is being watched. <laughs> anyway. That, Anyways. That's... <laughs> Anyways. Hold that, on to your doubloons. That's it's the show. That's the show, everybody. Uh, we'll uh, tune in next week for the next episode. And until then, uh, the story continues next time.